Here's the second optimization problem for the calculus course. In the first problem, we looked at optimizing the surface area for a square base prism with a given volume. In this one, we're going to be looking at optimizing the cost of materials when making a cylinder with a given volume. So once again, it's another optimizing surface area problem for a given volume, but it's a different shape and there's costs involved. So I'd encourage you when I put up the question to, you know, maybe pause, give it a try. And then after you've tried it, watch the video for the full solution and see how you did. So here we go. A soup can of volume 500 centimeters cubed is to be constructed. Okay, so that's our constraint. We know the volume of this soup can has to be 500 centimeters cubed. The material for the top costs 40, uh, 0.4 cents per centimeter square, while the material for the bottom and sides cost 0.2 cents per centimeter square. Find the dimensions that will minimize the cost of producing the can. What is the minimum cost? So we're, inter we're interested in optimizing the cost. So we're going to need a cost function for the very specific soup can um, that has a volume of 500 centimeters cubed. And we're going to need to use that equation to be able to find the minimum cost. We'll find the derivative, find critical numbers, test to see if they are a max or a min point, and then be able to use those critical numbers to find the minimum cost. So let's go ahead and do all of that. So the first thing we want to do, since we're interested in optimizing the cost, well the cost is based on the surface area, so we need a surface area equation. Remember a soup can is a cylinder, so let me just give you a visual representation of this, right? Here's our cylinder, here's our soup can. We're interested in figuring out um, what are the dimensions of this soup can so that the cost is optimized. And in this case the cost has to be at a minimum. And notice that um, each of these soup cans I have this program drawing for me, the volumes are all 500 centimeters cubed, and I'll show you how I did that in a minute. But we're figuring out which one of these soup cans that have a, has a volume of 500 centimeters cubed, which one of these optimizes the cost. So at what point is the cost at the lowest? Notice this soup can, the cost is 100. It starts going down, 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 but at a certain point, the costs start going back up. So we're interested in what dimensions actually keep the cost at the lowest and what is the lowest cost we can obtain for a soup can of that exact volume. So surface area of a cylinder, uh, we have to add the top and the bottom, so pi r squared plus pi r squared, right, they're both circles. Normally we'd combine them to be 2 pi r squared, but I'm going to keep them separate because if you notice in the question it tells us the top and the bottom actually have different costs associated with them, so I'm going to need them separate. So those are the top and the bottom, and then the side of the cylinder, we can find the area of that by doing 2 pi r h. So this will give us the surface area of a cylinder. Now remember, um, <clears throat> We're going to be interested in optimizing the cost. So the top costs 0.4 cents per centimeter squared. So if, let me just say that this is the top, bottom, side of the soup can. So the top costs 0.4 cents per centimeter squared. So let me write a cost equation now. So the cost equals 0.4 pi r squared. And then the bottom and the sides both cost 0.2 cents per centimeter square, so I'd have to multiply both of their areas by 0.2. So 0.2 pi r squared plus 0.2 pi r, 0.2 times 2 pi r h plus 0.2 times 2 pi r h. And I could collect those first two terms together. Cost equals 0.6 pi r squared. 0.6 pi r squared, right? They're like terms. They're both pi r squared terms. So add 0.4 and 0.2, I get 0.6 pi r squared. Um, <clears throat> and I could multiply the 0.2 and the 2 together and get 0 0.4. 0 0.4 pi r h. So here's a cost formula for, you know, any cylinder that has any radius or height we want, we could plug into this. But we want the very specific cost formula for the cylinder that has a volume of 500 centimeters cubed. So we have to adapt this formula so it is specifically tells us the cost for a soup can that has a volume of 500 centimeters cubed. So how are we going to do that? Well, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to replace either the r or the h variable to be written in terms of the other one. So I'm going to choose to rewrite the h variable, the height, in terms of the radius using the constraint that the question gives us. So this is always how you approach these problems. We want to come up with our formula for cost written in terms of one variable, and you use your constraint to do that. So what's our constraint? So 
off to the side here. So our constraint is that the volume has to be 500 centimeters cubed. Uh, so I know volume of a cylinder is area of base times height, so pi r squared h. And I know the volume has to be 500. So 500 equals pi r squared h. And then I could, for, for this very specific cylinder, I could figure out what the height or the radius would be in terms of the other variable just by rearranging it. So I can figure out what the height would be for any given radius if I rearrange this to isolate h and get 500 over pi r squared. So now what I've figured out is uh, a way to get the formula to adapt the height based on whatever the radius is to keep the volume constant. So I know that the height is going to be equal to 500 over pi r squared if we're going to keep the cylinder with a volume of 500. So what I can do into this formula is replace the h with what I figured out it's equal to to keep the volume, con volume constant at 500. So now what I've done is I've created a cost equation that is written only in terms of the radius. It's 0.6 pi r squared plus 0.4 pi r 500 over pi r squared. So this is my cost equation. So I can do a little bit of simplifying here. So it may be useful just to notice, okay, those cancel. Uh, one of those r's cancels with that r. And we'll do our 0.4 times 500 and we'll get 200. So we've got cost equals 0 0.6 pi r squared plus 200 over r, right? 0.4 times 500 is 200, and we're left with an r in the denominator because this one canceled out with one of those. So this is our cost equation. So we now have a cost equation that tells us the cost for any radius of our 500 centimeter cubed cylinder. And we're going to want to be able to figure out when is this cost at a minimum. Well, we know at a minimum point it would have a horizontal tangent. So let me show you this function graph. So let me move over to my Desmos application here. So in the Desmos application, I've graphed that function we just came up with. And we want to know when is this function at a minimum point. Well, I know at the minimum point, the first derivative is going to be zero. It's going to have a horizontal tangent. So I'm looking for roughly this point around here somewhere. It's three point something. I want to figure out that x value, and I can figure that out by setting the derivative equal to zero and solving, right? A critical number is a number that makes the derivative zero or undefined, and those critical numbers are our potential max or min points. So what we're going to do is we're going to first find the derivative of this, set it to zero, and solve. So the derivative of this, 2 times 0.6 is 1.2, so I got 1.2 pi r, and then remember 200 over r, if it helps you, right, 200 over r, that's the same as 200 r to the negative 1. So when I differentiate it, I'm going to think about it like that. Bring the exponent down becomes negative 200 r to the reduce the exponent by 1, r to the negative 2. So I wouldn't write it like that, though. I would move that to the denominator, and it would become this. Make the exponent positive when we move to the power to the denominator. Okay, so this is our derivative function. So if we can figure out when this is, is zero or undefined, we have our potential max or min points because that would be where the, you know, the tangent is zero or undefined on the original function. So this would be undefined if r was zero, but it, if we don't have to worry about that because if the radius is zero, the cylinder doesn't exist. But when could this function be equal to zero? When is there a horizontal tangent? So we'll set it to zero. And now I'll solve this equation. So I can just take this term, move it over. So I've got 200 over r squared equals 1.2 pi r. Multiply the r squared over. And I'll also divide the 1.2 pi over at the same time. So r times the r squared moved over is r cubed. And then to move a cube over, we cubed root. So that means exponent of a third. So I just need to evaluate this now. And that will tell me, um, that'll tell me a radius that that has a horizontal tangent at that point on the original function, right? So it's going to tell me a potential max or min point on the original function. So let's evaluate 200 over 1.2 pi cubed rooted, and I pre-typed that here. So I divided, and then I cubed rooted it, and I got about 3.76. So the radius is 
six. So at 3.76, what we have figured out is there's a horizontal tangent. Now that could be a few scenarios on the original function. It could mean there's a min, could mean there's a max, could mean there's somewhere else that has a horizontal tangent that's not a min or a max. We'd have to either use the first or second derivative test to verify this. So, I mean, we've seen the graph, like I showed you the graph. So like we know it's a min point at 3.76. So, and remember this is approximate, right? We rounded. So the first derivative is about zero there. So we found, we know it's a min point, but how could we tell? Well, we could do the first derivative test and realize that all the derivatives before that are negative and all the derivatives after that are positive, therefore it's a min point. Or we could do second derivative test and notice that at 3.76, the second derivative is positive, which means that the function is concave up at that point, which means it's a minimum point. So let me just quickly show you how we would do the second derivative test. So here's our first derivative. Let me just rewrite that. So second derivative test. So c prime at r is 1.2 pi r minus 200 r to the negative 2. So c double prime of r is 1.2 pi plus 400 r to the negative 3. And then we would just plug in the critical number we found, right? This we call a critical number because it's a zero of the first derivative, so it's a potential max or min. We would just plug that into this equation, 3.76. And if we plug that in, according to Desmos, we'd get about 11.29. So the fact that C double prime at 3.76 is positive, the fact that this is a positive number, tells us that the original function at 3.76 is concave up, therefore 3.76, and then whatever the cost at 3.76 is, is a min. So let's find out what is the minimum cost when the radius is 3.76, and we can do that by plugging into the original equation, um, which I've got Desmos already programmed in, so if 3.76 was plugged into the original cost equation, we get a cost of 79.84 cents. So min cost, so our final answer, uh, min cost of 79.84 cents with what dimensions? When radius is 3.76 centimeters, and we should also mention the height, and we could calculate the height using the equation we made from the, the constraint the question gave us, the height if we look way back up here, the height was equal to 500 over pi r squared. So if we do 500 over pi times 3.76 squared, we get about 11.26. It's about 11.26 centimeters. So these dimensions result in a cylinder that would cost 79.84 cents to make, which is the minimum cost. And we can see that from the Desmos graph, right? At a radius of 3.76, we have a minimum cost of 79.84. And we could also verify that with the GeoGebra app I made here. So right now I have the radius set at 2.4. We know that's uh, a smaller radius than the optimum radius. But notice the cost is 94 cents to make this, this soup can here. And as I move the radius closer to 3.7, uh, we should notice the cost starts going down. And it does. And once I pass a radius of 3.7, the cost should start going back up. And it does. So apparently 3.76 is the radius that is going to give us the optimal cost. It's the radius that's going to give us the lowest possible cost. Let's verify that here. Let's put in 3.76. And notice the cost, yes, is 79.84 cents, which is the, the minimum cost that we were able to find using calculus. And notice that's the cost for a soup can that has a radius of 3.76 and a height of 11.26. And the volume, yes, is constant at 500 centimeters cubed. All right, so that was the end of our second optimization problem. Make sure you make sure you're subscribed to the channel because I'm going to be posting more optimization problems that um, you know I'm going to do a shortest distance one. I'll do a rectangle one as well. So the only way to get good at these problems is to be exposed to a lot of different types and to just practice all of them. So make sure you're subscribed and hopefully this video helped for you.